and welcome uh, providers, everyone watching, listening and uh, streaming or whatever you do with this show. Welcome everyone. Hola amigo Henrik, how's it going? Very good. Hi uh, Leandro, it's been it's been a week now. I think we did a we did a live stream a couple of days ago. Let's try to keep those a little bit more uh, frequent and often. I'm not sure when we are going to be publishing this thing, but it's going to be uh, a little bit more frequent so that uh, our friends and listeners, viewers, or how, however <laughs> he said, um, will have some perfites, uh, continuous perfites, um, pun intended, uh, CICD of perfites. <laughs> um, so, everyone, uh, welcome. It's me, your amigo Leandro. We have here our amigo uh, uh, Monami Henrik, who uh, today we are going to be talking about a topic that often I personally get questions all the time. Um, I'm not sure about you, Henrik, if you get asked questions about those lines. Uh, uh, not not uh, so much. It's more about issues or uh, regular patterns. But this mm. one, no. Uh, um, but I, I think it makes a lot of sense because I think uh, people are usually uh, worried about, oh, how how and why and is it worth it and so on so i think it's 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 a, it's a great point to cover yeah so and in in line with the with the topic as well this this what we are going to be talking today is how to start in performance testing in the performance world in this year 2023 because most probably uh, the provides episodes have touched on this here and there or several times more mo, mo, most uh, probably, but things have changed. Things, uh, our audiences probably, hopefully, are younger, newer people are wanting to learn how to get into performance. And as well, this goes a little bit in line with um, if anyone has, uh, has not read uh, James Pulley's book about hiring performance uh, people, I highly suggest take a look at it, amazon.com, put the name of our friend, James Pulley, and his book will appear. And this is a situation where um, in the book he shares some frustrations, right? There's people that has been promoted or just thrown at the fire of performance or trying to get into positions where probably the skill sets are not there or how to get there, right? And how how to get there, how to start in performance is, is something that that's a question. Hey, what should I do? This thing that you're talking about, perf something sounds interesting. How should I begin? How should I start getting into it? And that brought me to think of, well, it's a good thing to share how we all started. And Amigo Henrik, I don't know precisely, how did you start in performance testing? What were your first projects or how was it? So well, first of all, um, I, I used to be a developer. Uh, mainly uh, building codes. So I was working for a, for a service company. So uh, do, doing engagements uh, in every customers. So never touching really performance aspects. Mainly I was deep into SQL, .NET, uh, any type of th th things like this, uh, SQL Server, in fact. And um, after one engagement uh, where I spend, I don't know how, how long I was spending there at that, at that customer, um, I was at, you know, when you are in a, you know, service company, uh, you, you come to the main headquarter, you do stuff. And then someone says, Hey, um, do you want to do a uh, performance testing? Ooh. And I just heard the, the term testing at that moment and I say testing, no way. I don't want to do testing anymore. There is something I'm, I'm not about to, I want to have techie stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, in the evening I, I went back home, I looked at what is performance testing? So I looked at it uh, and I so suddenly I realized that it's not testing as the traditional testing that I thought, um, generating identified limits, uh, optimizing systems, uh, validating that the systems is able to handle the load. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, so I clearly say yes. So I went to the, my first, um, Engagement for a for a French customer uh, in the insurance industry, and I learned the job. So first, I I uh, because I had the background of designing software and 
and also deploying it. So uh, the notion of, uh, I don't know, uh, all the notion of HTTP and networking and different uh, garbage collector layers and those I already had it as a background, but I didn't know how to deliver uh, performance or generating load on a system. So I had to go through uh, learning a tool and that time it was Node Runner. And then also the mythology, because uh, knowing a tool is great, but if you don't know how to configure and what, how to configure the tool to make the simulation that you had in mind, then it is not worth it. So uh, I went through the, the steps, and then afterward I, I did a couple of uh, uh, tests. It was mainly web UI, but my first project was... Um, the company wanted to use a component um, that will uh, um, take a mainframe application into web. So basically it's uh, revamping the mainframe uh, UI into web UI where you have web UI components. And there was a, there was a component doing that uh, based in, in Java. In fact, heavily on, on the, I don't know what the JBoss or something. I don't remember the, the stack behind the scene, but <laughs> what I know is that I was running that that test, and yeah, things were obviously not going on the right direction <laughs> in terms of, of behavior sure. response and so on. And this is where I started to have fun because uh, I I was doing some tunings, so tuning the the JVM, the right settings to find uh, the right uh, garbage collector algorithm that we should apply, uh, changing uh, the pool size and everything. So then. Uh, having and, and what, that was really motivating uh, for me at least because I, uh, when you start realizing that by by doing some small actions, you start to increase the performance by 120, 110, 120, 150 percent, 160 percent, and then you say you're super excited, and say, ah, come on, I'm going to do that for forever. Um, so yeah, so that that's basically where where this project um, motivated me to invest more. Um, and then also what I really liked about this type of work uh, as a performance engineer is that you have some techie uh, tasks. So you need to understand the systems, optimize the system. Uh, you obviously need to have something that will simulate or generate traffic. So you will have to do some scripting or if, if, if required, of course. Um, but then you have all the other aspects that I thought was pretty fun. Uh, so... Uh, collecting the uh, the needs uh, to build a test case. I mean, uh, but what... but that that's a little bit more of uh, you're already getting into the advanced steps where you already were getting like um, a good f sense of uh, what is the performance testing uh, area or the tasks that we are supposed to do. But two things that jump into uh, from your story from the past one, uh, you said testing never again. Did you do testing before? No, for me it was like building J unit test or doing some. Oh, uh, unit testing. Okay. And then I, yeah. in fact, I have my colleagues working uh, in this uh, service provider was mainly doing functional testing. So w when we were doing some, I don't know, um, non official parties uh, in the bar or somewhere else, they were basically explaining what they were doing. And one thing that I just um, had in my mind after those discussions, I say, I will never work in testing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's silly because it's um i mean probably we're debating a little bit but that fight developers against testers and it's like the war and yeah i had very bad pre preconceptions as well uh, but the, another thing that caught my attention what was the very first step activity or thing that you did in performance testing um because you already mentioned all the possible actions and tasks that one can do what was the very first one and that project uh, so the, the first one is, is uh, in my case, when I arrived, um, so I, I had a mentor, um, I mean, a colleague that was going to leave that project. So I was supposed to take over. So he basically helped me to uh, get in uh, in the industry, in the, in that or in that job. Um, so um, I basically first, naturally, the first thing is you need to know the tool. So I went after being uh, going through a training provided by HP at uh, Mercury. You know, it was a transition between Mercury and HP. Hmm. Um, and uh, after that training, then I had to basically script. So I did some scripting to understand how it works. And then- How was that a scripting experience? What were you doing? 
Uh, I mean, I thought, oh, it's, I mean, I didn't have any uh, other experience with other tools. That was my first load testing product that I was basically playing with. So uh, recording and then get the raw recording and then uh, the notion of uh, building uh, variables. And I thought that, oh, you don't have to do regular expressions so much. I mean, it's, it's a different way of doing it in, in Load Runner at that time. Uh, so I thought it was fairly easy. I mean, not fairly easy, but uh, I thought it was compared to coding traditional um, applications, especially when I looked at it initially, I said, oh, it's C language. Gosh, it's going to be a nightmare because of C, uh, my experience with C was very far. Uh, but then it, there was so much library, it was quite easy, and everything was preset with the recording, so it was so much not so much complicated. And then the other approach that was required after re scripting was, oh, now that you have a script, now let's configure um, the tool to get uh, to be able to run this this uh, test uh, or this, this script in uh, align with the, the 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 user conditions or the 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 applications conditions uh, so uh, configuring replicated the test cases and all the yeah, you running the right number of virtual users defining the right thing times uh, defining the right ramp up and so on uh, so that was the, the the other piece that was uh, involved and one one aspect uh, uh, and I, one aspect that I, I really loved uh, as well and that that's that also explain why I'm in that that role today is uh, implementing monitoring. So, so I started to figure out all the requirements to get some data in the systems. Then I wanted to help to make this the, the process to, to get all all the requirements to get monitoring data um, in a, in a, in a, in this in this organization. So I started to make some some documents and some stuff. But that was I mean that was great. I mean, and I understood uh, that collecting data from servers at that time there were a lot of requirements in terms of networking and so on uh, so that was a great way of see the reality understand the constraints so then it's easier to deliver later on and by the way you so you, i never you never told me about your story how did you jump i mean start to work in performance it's it's funny because um when you when you mentioned your story, I just uh, found so many uh, similitudes or um, situations. I I started as a developer in IT as well, very much as you were saying, developing .NET applications, uh, C sharp, dealing with some database connections, and um, with with some disliking as well for the word testing. Even as I think. On those days, uh, of course, I was uh, developing projects in Mexico City for insurance applications, uh, institutions, some banks here and there. And believe it or not, the QA part was not that much in the picture. And even sometimes when it was mentioned, was like this preconception, like, why should I test this application that you're selling me? Are you saying that you're not selling perfect products? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and and funny enough, it was an approach where a, a friend came to me and told me like, hey, I'm working in this awesome company. They are, <laughs> we travel a lot and that's awesome. Okay, I'm it. Like, um, what do I need? So it was all based on experience, like the development and uh, what I knew. One, one big question, like, do you know RP, CRMs or any of these systems? Like, sure. I've been developing them for a while. And yep, you're in. So I joined this new company. I have no idea what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to be traveling, and that's what I was uh, looking for. Um, funny uh, note, it was um, third quarter of 2008. We know what happened in 2008. So it was an interesting uh, situation. I joined the company, and they tell me, because of your background, you go, like, uh, I felt like um, Harry Potter, when you get the hat, what school are you going to go into the QA <laughs> realm? And your performance testing, I'm like, I don't know what that is. Sure, no problem. And similar to you, I was sent to a new hire training or boot camp. Like, hey, this is a scripting for performance testing. You capture packages, you kind of uh, analyze them, check what was recorded, forge it, modify it so that uh, variable sessions, uh, view states, all those things that I was used to, ASP.NET, um, C sharp and all those things like, yeah, I've developed them on the other side. So I understood, as you say, this developer understanding was critical because, yeah, well, um, 
I'm not saying that it's difficult, but it made it easier, right? Yeah, and, and I think uh, uh, one thing that that uh, I touched uh, later on was analyzing. And I think, I guess, with this background of being close to coding app and close to understand where that app is going to run in which environment, what, what is the architecture, understanding that technical uh, environment made my the analysis much more easier. I don't know for you, but that was for me a very, uh, I mean, natural to, to jump into analysis. I think for me, um, made it very straightforward to understand the HTTP protocol from recording the actions uh, on the front end or the GUI. Because um, of course I had developed uh, desktop applications, GUI with objects and the BTN for the button and these things. I kind of understood how to create selectors and uh, all, all, all these type of things. But when I saw like, hey, it's just a protocol, whatever is sent through the, in, in those days it was through the wire pretty much. There was not that much Wi-Fi yet or was like in, in diapers yet. But it was just like, it's a HTTP protocol. Yeah, I've done that. I played as well, like um, simulating pings or some mischievous uh, things like, hey, I can create a bot. I had some experience creating bots, which from performance testing is uh, the, the automation uh, for load testing is not that different. So it was just like, yeah, I'm used to this, simulating, forging, uh, 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 creating these packages. And then it was the part when you said, um, yeah, but you also have to understand there's a mix for this flow of steps, the flow of other steps, and the third action, 10th actions, there are several different test cases. You need to learn how much to push each one so that you have overall a good mix. And I was like, hmm, makes sense, makes sense. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I think I can do it. Funny enough, um, three weeks later after joining this company, I was supposed to go on a project uh, I remember Eindhoven in Europe, uh, Netherlands, if I yeah, yeah, uh, right. remember well. Uh, some of those big customers that we know from that area of the world, I won't say, but uh, everyone knows, everybody knows. Uh, and, and then 2008 happened, the uh, project is um, uh, paused, and oh. So I started doing manual testing for some months, and it was a weird period. <laughs> but suddenly, yeah, video gaming company programming uh, scripts to play against each other. And it was like from zero to 200 uh, suddenly. But I think those skills helped a lot because at a, st at a starting point, what you would do in performance testing on those days was to automate for load, right? But I don't, I mean, for me, I started to work on that a bit. A bit similar to you, uh, 2000, uh, 2000. If you say it's a transition to Mercury HP, yeah. it's around those days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And for me, um, I mean, going, uh, I mean, I guess you, you had also been someone that mentoring and uh, going through uh, scripting and, and all this stuff to, and to discover all the tasks that, that you should manage and, and be in charge as a performance engineer, I guess you were, did the same approach with someone guiding you and walking through what should be done and not should, not should be done properly uh, in this specific project. Or did you just... Yes. <laughs> I think I think for uh, those three weeks that I had this uh, boot camp, new hire training, all that, there I had a mentor who, very good uh, professor, Leonel Mesa. Hi, Leonel. I don't know if you're watching, but... He got me running. I, I learned, understood very well how to automate. Like that part sank in awesome. And as I said, uh, about six or so months later, I was thrown into that project. No idea what was happening. Uh, but I already had like this feeling, like this notion, like, yeah, I need to mimic as uh, realistic as possible what is going to happen in the system. And I, 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 there was a leader in that project, uh, but was in charge of installing, uh, what was the name of this performance center? Um, <laughs> that was his, uh, duties, but, uh, I was like, my duties were like, Hey, you are going to define what is the, um, workload. How are the scenarios? What we are going to be simulating. The customer has this number of, uh, it was players that was even better because 
online players on a Facebook implementation of a, uh, it, it, it was like a Micromedia Flash game in Facebook embedded. So it was players playing against each other. So this number of players doing uh, a play uh, at this space, each one of them, and that's it. So it was very straightforward. I think that was a very good beginning as a project to, uh, um, for me to understand what should I do. The test case was player playing its turn and that's it. And then keep looping, waiting for the turn. Not, not much else. So I don't know. And no, no monitoring at that moment. The team dealt with that completely. That the, the client's team. Okay, so because we we I mean, I um, so first one thing. For, I mean, I don't know for you, but at that time, to be honest, uh, performance were okay. It's it's a checkbox yeah. in the deployment, and. I was a bit frustrated sometimes where you discover major problems, but the project says, whatever, we're going to go. And then and then they go in production and, and what you have predicted happens uh, as expected. <laughs> and then it's fire. And then it goes back and say, why well, it's your fault. And, and because you and said, yeah, but no, it's not my fault because I, I told you about it. Uh, so this, I mean, that time, I think for working uh, into organization that are not mature or able to hear about performance in general was, I mean, for me, was very frustrated. I mean, at least there was a, a path where you were uh, teaching them. So that was fun. But still, uh, the influence and, and changing the culture is very hard. And I think now, for someone starting in uh, in the in the performance world, I mean, performance, as we know, is, is critical. We know, I mean, everything has been... Is, is there is nothing to say anymore to customers? They know it, uh, so I think it's it's easier and, and there is way way more options to uh, be to influence a bit more and have more impact into the organization. I think that's that's very important for those who wants to start today. Is it's that that you don't you want to face the same frustration as we did in the past, and also um, out of this frustration, what I thought was amazing is when you are a developer working for a service company, you will maybe do three, one year, two years, three years engagement with a specific technology, with a specific architecture. So you touch base, you, you are an expert on that environment because basically it's your day-to-day -day environment. But working as a performance engineer, and we were doing a lot of validation for all the various systems in, the, in this uh, customer, um, you are you have the chance to touch to i don't know 20 different technology 10 mm. tw uh, lots of various way of deploying it so you you're basically discovering different architecture concepts uh, different approach and uh, in terms of learning um of uh, approaches to manage traffic or to uh to scale uh, your components it's wonderful I mean, I think I will never have learned uh, that much of uh, concepts if I was still working as a developer. I will be probably a good developer uh, <laughs> with a lot of great techniques. But the, 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 this notion of knowing the IT architecture concepts and landscape and what you can act actually do, this has been brought by working those that, that many years as a performance engineer and that that is a great i think it's it's an interesting point because um when you were mentioning these uh, projects where performance is just a checkbox and it's a performance something that we have to do to release the project and for everyone listening this was the waterfall days as well like yeah. th this is part of the process until you release into production and then everyone's done and everyone gets the hell out of their um and and it's interesting in in my case before um getting into performance i had some experience i had i was um random add curious i don't know how do you want to describe it but i jumped in roles previously i was a dba network administrator uh infrastructure so i had some background understanding some of the other elements Personally, this was my situation because I was curious, random, or uh, ADD, if you want to say it. But 
you are right. Many developers have no idea what they will release, how it impacts, impacts the network, if it will consume too much memory in the servers, in the backend. If you are going to drive nuts, the operations people, when you release that software with all those uh, failures, it's a, it's, a, it's a good point. Performance gives you a big perspective. And especially, I think, Nowadays, because many organizations do not understand it, do not care, it's a checkbox still nowadays, modern times. And I, I was lucky in this first project, a video game company, very good, well versed on testing. They had problems and they were like, we need performance testing, we need this, 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 and that. It was very punctual. But the rest of the projects, I would say 90% of them were like, yeah, test 10,000 users. Why 10,000? We like that number. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Mm. Let's see. <laughs> it was little by little because my very first projects, I was like, yeah, 10,000 years, I don't know why, but let's do it, yay. <laughs> you start learning, you start understanding and questioning. And that's kind of the, the role, like on those days, you were thrown into the fire, similar, uh, uh, you had some mentorship. I found it here and there, but it wasn't uh, like, um, uh, I don't know, Obi-Wan Kenobi held my hand and, uh, uh, no, I was just figuring things out most of the time. It was good to have conferences, to have uh, people like uh, Mark, James, uh, Wilson Marr, like all those slow runner blogs from Wilson, I remember was like, yeah, I consumed those like crazy because helped me in doing those things. But I remember at my time, I mean, at that moment, because I was uh, based in, in, in Europe, in, in France, um, and I, first of all, the, the mentoring was basically a transitioning of the project. So you had to be mentored to understand because my, my the intention was to be the responsible of the performance uh, center of excellence, sort of some, but mm -hmm. we were a center of excellence of two people. So it's a very, <laughs> very small one. <laughs> but then we, incre we increased it to 10. So there that, that, that was actually a need. So that was fun. But you mentioned something that I want to bring up, which is really important. You said, uh, because it's the same thing. I, I always been. Uh, and this is my my day to day uh, uh, mantra in when I do work. I'm I'm curious and I'm passionate uh, in what I'm doing. And I think when you are taking that role, if you're not curious, uh, then you you're not going to solve uh, the investigation because you're going to run some some load and and something's going to fail. And if you're not curious by looking at errors, at response times, at the various layers, at the logs, at the, and all those components, then, yeah, you're not going to provide any value for the organization. So I think curiosity and, and, and trying to de go deep in those layers, I think it's, it's one of the, the elements required to, to be very uh, impactful in, as a performance engineer. It, it was when we started, definitely. And I think still, it still is. Um, and this is another one where I wanted to pick your brain. How do you think would be the experience if you and I started today, 2023, as a performance engineer? What do you think would be our first steps, tasks? I think uh, it really depends where you land. I mean, if, I, yeah. if I'm more on the on a on a squad team as a developer i will probably do some simple uh, test case so maybe the the need of knowing a tool um is is as 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 shifted because now i mean again i'm not saying for everyone but from what, what i see around me people are using tools to just generate traffic and then they are relying on solution that observability solutions that will get all the data and then you start investigating. So I think now the, the, the tooling requirements are obviously changed. So if you look at the, those, uh, I would say performance tools for, for developers, it's closer to uh, coding. So I think as a developer background, it will be very easy to transition to, to go in that directions. Um, what is also great is that you don't have, because in my time we, we had to, make sure that our load testing product is collecting metrics on all those various layers to be able to analyze it through on that product. 
now because we have an observed solution in place, we probably have the right signals. I mean, at least you have to verify that you have the right observability for your pro project. But I think then it's more straightforward. It's it's I think it's more easier because it's like a uh, it's almost like a self service. I build my script. I know that I'm going to do that number of hits. I run I run, I run my hits. Then I open the observed solution. I look at my data um, the, from by logs, by traces, by metrics. There is so many now uh, exciting um, type of data that we can rely on as a as a performance engineer. That that the analysis I think it is faster. Um, and I think the cycle where a couple of years ago we were doing a two two weeks or three weeks gig where we, we had to deliver and, and do load tests very quickly or or you you had to run in production before during the deployment process. So you were being up at 3 a.m. in the morning doing your load. <laughs> and then at 6 a.m. we had to recover. So then it was up and running for everyone. This type of exercise, maybe you, you have it sometimes still, uh, but it, I think it's more on the automated side. So you don't uh, you still have probably some products say, ah, you have to press play to run your test. But I think lots of, most of the tests that comes out of those organizations will be more triggered through automation, CI, CD, or whatever you, you name it. Um, so I think the job has, 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 has shifted in different different direction. But I think it's exciting because you are, you are much more closer to the technical layers that is running in the system in the application. So understanding on what's going on could be much more easier. Even if it's a, a, the architecture with microservices, you have way much component, but usually when you do those tests, you try to do a uh, unit. So you, you focus on small components and then you extend the coverage. So I think you know way much the system than in a traditional waterfall load test where you say, hey, here, come on. Run the test, and I say, okay, you give me the architecture. Okay, okay. So front end, okay. There's an app layer. Okay, okay. So, so you make the logical connections, but but again, here you have way more um, knowledge about the application that that we used to have a couple of years back. It's interesting because mm, would you agree if I am like freshman out of college, just just I or my first job. Uh, my my feeling is that still to land it on performance, still the most common fading, but it's automate. Learn how to automate. Nowadays it's APIs more than um, full communication and thick clients through the web and all the steps. But still automation, right? What what do you think? Uh, someone looking to land a gig at performance testing, what would be the first activities? Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, obviously uh, scripting. I mean, automate the uh, user journey in, in the environment and making sure that the automated script is uh, not hitting the same assets on and on and on. So you, you so mm -hmm. your your test is uh, is realistic and not testing the cache. Um, I think that will be the natural first steps. Um, there's, then, there's course, another area that I think it's growing a little bit. Of course, what you were going to say. Yeah, uh, of course, I think uh, being also, um, uh, you will probably be uh, have to touch the your uh, CI CD systems. So def adjusting the pipeline, the automation, how you're going to trigger your test, that will be one of the tasks you will probably start because it's going to be obvious. Um, the analysis again will be probably give um, uh, owned by a more senior profile, but I think yeah, scripting will be uh, one of those first pieces. Uh, and another thing that you mentioned, uh, very good, and it's a big difference from when we were when we were starting. I think. Did you ever had access to the application code before? <laughs> I will, uh, you're already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 for sure, no. Not uh, at all, right? We, we had no idea what was happening inside of the application. And nowadays, most of the time we do. We are yeah. part of that repository. We can go and check the objects, the classes, everything that's that true. is being developed. And I think that's a big change because if 
we understand that application, that code, what is happening, we are better suited to develop to those APIs. We have, before I remember, it was the end of the world if you didn't have a whistle for your services, your uh, web services. Nowadays, we have our swaggers, the list, everything. Oh, there's nothing in line. Well, I can go inside of the code and see what is the API sending, yeah. receiving, understand it, right? It makes a big difference. Yeah, for sure. It, it's it's reduced so much uh, frustration time uh, <laughs> to get the right assets to start doing your stuff. I agree. I agree. And, and, and another one is that as performance engineers, most probably we are part of the team if things are being done well, because uh, many teams are still, one, dealing with end-to-end um, -end applications, uh, monolithic, blah, 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 and having this thing where performance and QA is like that separate team in the basement or in the corner that uh, we just pay attention at the end of the sprint where we are trying to release. But still, we have some interaction with the people, the developers before. I remember with Waterfall, I, if I had a situation with the code, I just created an effect, send it somewhere. Probably the developer wasn't even anymore in the project, in the country, went back to India or something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not being um, stereotypical or anything, true story that, uh, that, that happened to me. And I, you had no control, you had no idea, and you had to reverse engineer what uh, was being developed to be able to automate and test it. Nowadays, it's a huge change, and that reinforces a little bit what you were saying. Performance engineers starting now uh, today in the organization should understand a little bit of the code being created, right? Agree, agree. I think it's still a techy, it's it's still a technical task. So if you don't have the technical skills, it's gonna be it's gonna be very challenging. And uh, and because we people are running test as early as possible, you still have the, the, those light, light, late 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 uh, quite late uh, test in a cycle, but they are obviously different. But but again, if you don't understand your system and and where the which component will be involved in your tests, I I don't know. I mean, you won't be able to analyze and and, and give some recommendations. And that's that was the first thing that I when I was uh, trying to uh, uh, um, onboard new engineers uh, in in the practice. I always said the first thing that you need to to do is to learn and understand the system that you are going to test. Otherwise, you're just going to throw a load and you have no clue where to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially now, if you everything run on 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 the cloud. Uh, there is all, all, all other comp uh, concepts that was not there at the time, so you you need to understand the actual architecture because you can have a lot of bottlenecks on different areas. Uh, if you're testing a, a Kubernetes systems, if you don't know Kubernetes, I don't know how mm -hmm. you can understand what's going on. So again, knowing your environment, I think, is the most important aspect. Yeah, I mean this this. On one hand, I think that we always, uh, performance engineers having like um, Swiss army knives, not, I wouldn't say we are the, it has a little screwdriver that we can use for some things. We are not the screwdriver, not even the electric, the power, blah, 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 but we understand that we can do a little bit of it, a little bit of that, understand. Multi-skill curiosity, I think our skills that in the past were needed and nowadays that's that still says we we need curious people that um grows the knowledge kind of the understanding there are somewhere yeah there are projects as i said i was totally on board with the ten thousand users for because it sounds cool ten thousand, and that's that's why that number was chosen but eventually you start to get better polish the skills and um get to that point but as a starting point i would say basic um i say skills or activities understand apis nowadays i would say api is like the cornerstone of everything software uh being developed nowadays everything goes through an api i'm guessing yeah but i think more than just uh, the code application code something that i used to do when i was uh, at customer side is to understand 
Okay, so you have an app, but what else going to run at the same time, at the same moment? Hmm. And I remember people were uh, completely removing the batches. Yes, we are in testing environment. There is no batch. But in production, there will be batches. And, oh, that batch is going to hit the same the same database or the same table or whatever, or the same assets. And uh, and that there is concurrency. And uh, I think... Mm -hmm. Uh, th that's that's one thing which is important is uh, you have to be clever enough to understand what is happening in the environment. And then with your Swiss army knife that you mentioned, you need to say, oh, so I need to simulate that. All right. So how can I simulate this? Oh, I'm going to send some 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 noise or whatever, some traffic there. And that will make the, the reproduce. Or, or, or a good question. Do I even need to simulate it? Can I just Working. go and click it? It's just a patch. Yeah, it's, it's scheduled. True. It will run. There, that's a, that's another one that I remember uh, was a big mistake uh, in my first projects. Like, yeah, these are 10, 15 business processes that you need to automate. Three of them are batch processes. Why am I automating the process of logging into, let's say, SAP, creating the batch, triggering the batch? Can I just program it? You, you, you were doing like an automation to set up another automation and run. That was a weird thing that and not understanding that was um, wasting the performance engineer time that could have been used, as you say, analyzing logs, understanding other components. And I don't know, some of those learnings along, but, but I got that when I'm ashamed to admit, but two years after I started probably, because at the very beginning, you are just like, yeah, I don't meet, I don't meet, I don't meet. I have execute, execute, <laughs> load test, load test, load test. That's your task. That's what you have to do <clears throat> at the very beginning. When you uh, achieve some seniority or experience or expertise or whatever you want to call it, is when you start to question like, have I been doing the right thing all this time? I, I always um, uh, do the example with a gym membership or when you start, when you start to go to the gym, it's like, yeah, you hurt yourself you do all the sorts of mistakes if you keep going but eventually it's like yeah i should probably not eat that cheeseburger after or not uh twist my arm this way because i'm gonna hurt i don't know this experience that comes after the fact but at the very beginning i think it's that gym membership how to get it how do i get those first steps right yeah, but beware because the gym, sometimes people take the subscription and then three months later, they, they don't go anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and that's, a, that's a very good analogy to the organizations that is a checkbox yeah. for something. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, just like, yeah, I just did the performance something. Many, many organizations, projects that I was at, they didn't care about the results. They just wanted to go to production. And it's it's a bit demoralizing at times. Like... What I do doesn't matter. I, that's, I'm just wasting my life. Or, but but I think the, 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 this topic of of the the scripting part, I think that was. I mean, from my perspective, and that that's my feeling. Again, uh, I'm I'm probably a hundred percent wrong, but the practice has always been considered to be very expensive for an organization. Oh, you need it toolings. Is. Yes, you need to have toolings, um, and and at that time there was one tool that was mainly popular and it was quite expensive. Um, and then people says, oh, I need to do a load test and we need 50, to, uh, like you said, we need uh, 20 use cases. I say 20, that's a lot. So, okay. Uh, and then you don't, you don't, uh, when you're a junior, you don't, you don't usually ask questions and you say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then if you like 20 test cases and if you want test case, test case is quite complex, it would take you one, two days. Then you say, okay, so and then you size the project. And then at the end, it's it's a lot of days to deliver the project. So at the end, from a project perspective, they say, oh, we're not going to do performance because it's so much expensive. And I think uh, with the change of mythology and the, now the way we're delivering it, uh, people do, don't argue anymore about oh, performance is expensive and we're not going to run it because it's, it will take two months or one month or whatever to 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 achieve the uh, the objectives of this uh, testing uh, performance testing campaign you know and that that's another th uh, change i think um it's not anymore a single project one thing you do once and forget now performance we are continuous we are doing software that is uh, mutating 
way more. I'm not saying in the past it didn't, but it changed like once a year, twice a year, if you were lucky. And another another thing that you touched very well, I think in the past, yeah, there were tools trying to be the one ring to rule them all and trying to do everything, monitoring, load analysis and everything in the same one. But there were times where I remember um, open SDA or SDA. SDA. Yeah. Like some of those tools, when you understand what is the concept and what you have to do, I always say this, it doesn't matter. Once you learn how to drive, it doesn't matter if it's an old Volkswagen Beetle, if it's a truck or if it's, you understand, wheel, accelerator, brake, probably gear change. That's it. Yeah, but yeah, but you don't have the air condition. Uh, you don't have that uh, fancy uh, screen in the middle, and you don't. Have... <laughs> but I just need to move from A to B at times. Some yeah. others I need to pick a prospect girlfriend that I need to have air condition. But it's yeah. it's important to understand. But you know, if, it, if I go out with a load runner, you know, people will look at me in the street. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on those days, right? Because the, the Open STA Rational Performance Tester. There were several options. Even J Meter, I think, on those days was around, was not as stable. I didn't like it uh, that much. Um, but you understood. You were like, yeah, I can switch to this tool. Now I understand it. But the key thing is to understand not to drive a, let's say, a Hummer or a Tesla nowadays, but to understand the principles wheel, direction, mm, gas, mm, propel, brakes, stop. What do I need? Where do I find it? And that way you don't have any issues switching from Microsoft Word to Google Docs to say, you know, what are the things you need to do? And go on. No, no, I think that, that that's a good point. Uh, and I think the there's still still vendor out there and uh, in the performance world, which makes complete sense. And they try to differentiate themselves. I do, oh, we provide more automation. It's quicker, it's faster. That's pro that's probably 100% true, but again, if you know how to start the engine, uh, put the gas like you mentioned, then sometimes if you don't have the budget, you don't have to go in the direction of utilizing uh, um, commercial solution. Uh, there are lots of open source solutions that do the great job of that. Yeah, you meet this new girl, you don't need to come in driving your uh, Homer load runner or something. <laughs> You're like, I just need to do the job. So don't worry. That that's probably a bad joke analogy, but me. <laughs> um, so, and, and and I was going to mention another thing where I think performance engineers from 2023 could start or start looking for job positions if they want to learn, because in the past, performance testing and automation was um, being used for two purposes. One, yes, generating load, load testing whatever uh, neo load load runner load was in the title of the tool but the second one was knowing the performance when you and i started i remember that was the only way that you had to know the performance of your application what was the experience of your users nowadays we have some tooling some evolution happening and a new realm that i think intersects big time with performance testing you know which yeah. one it is <laughs> Open telemetry. Not only the open tele observability in general, I would say. It's yeah, it's... But having an open I mean uh, having a standard format, it's a lowest oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. E no, even I'm... ease the uh make make the life easier for everyone. But I agree, I... I agree. I mean uh I remember being a customer and say I need to do that test and, and usually nobody know how what's the actual traffic. So I was playing I was I had the chance. I mean, not not every account will uh, customers will give you the access, but I had access to Google Analytics and I would do some extractions. I remember spending hours in Excel sheets, um, doing some uh, uh, pivot tables to figure out where is the actual spike and so on. To uh, then once I had that, then I was able to define what we were sh actually supposed to test. And now with Observity, you don't have to do that anymore because you can go to the Observity solution. It's already in production. You can, hey, oh, well, the user is going there. Oh, okay, uh, this is uh, okay. So that seems like a user journey that we need to reproduce. Um, so I think it's it's it simplifies so much uh, the work uh, and also the time to deliver. Uh, and and I would argue at times if you have a good observability uh, 
capabilities in your software and solution, you may not even need automations uh, many times. If your concern is load, yeah, you'll need to automate that load. But if your concern is just, I just need to know the performance of my solution, and if I'm doing well in production or surviving, or this new release is gonna kill my productive environment, you may not need automations that many. With good observability practices as well, I think yeah. if you have them well-developed and let's say in the dev environment, staging, whatever pre-steps you have to get to production, you know that new piece of code, what is the performance of it? You can see it, right? And, and if you also have SREs in place in the organizations, then you also have lots of knowledge. Um, so about what was the, because the, we had a question I remember back in the early, I said, well, well, did you have any production issues? What was the story? Did you have any frustration on the previous releases to understand the, the history of the application and what was wrong in their system? Now you don't have to do that. I mean, you can, if you have access to Jira or any stick of the system, you can look at it, but having the SREs showing the SLOs that you're looking at, those are indicators, KPI that, oh, this is what they're looking at on a daily basis. So that's just fantastic, I think. It's it's um, a big change because when, when you were saying that story, I just thought in the past, like when you would come to, I don't know, there weren't SREs yet, uh, operations people, infrastructure, whoever, uh, uh, the admins, his admins. Hey, uh, what's the utilization? What is production? How are they doing? Uh, is, uh, are your users having a good experience? I don't know. Uh, we don't get that many complaints. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that was the only way to know, right? And, and yeah. even to, to get uh, utilization, just speaking right now into simulating load and doing a load testing project, to know what to simulate, was a wild goose chase, uh, like um, lick your finger, feel the air, and try to kind of come up with some load patterns. And nowadays with a good observability platform, it's just like, I have the numbers. You could even think of fitting them automatically into your load tests, right? And then avoid this conversation, oh, I have 50K users, but actually there is only 10 concurrent users. With the observation solution, you know actually how much concurrent users you have, and you don't have to that debate that you that we were having a few years back, say, what is the actual load? Oh, it's 1 million. Uh-huh, okay, 1 million. 1 million what? <laughs> users, what are they doing? Connected, <laughs> and that's it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's and, and, and it's an, another probably uh, topic for another episode where I, I personally feel that now with microservice um, infrastructure and how our applications are developed, the virtual user term may not be that uh, relevant nowadays. It's more hits per second. It's, it's throughput, right? It's what we yeah. should be carrying. And uh, how many threads do I need or uh, parallel processes, whatever you want to call them, to simulate that throughput. That's, I think, nowadays. But still, there's people, but I want to know how many users can I have in my system. Mm -hmm. And it's understandable. I mean, I'm not yeah. making that much fun of them. It's a metric that we are used to. We're human beings, and we think how many uh, tuk-tuks can we fit in our caves from the past and that's how our brains work uh, most of the time yeah. but i mean some of these changes i think going back to people starting in performance or modern um 2023 new hires i think the two paths that um the people looking for job opportunities positions one yes it's still automate it's still creating the scripts but understand that um, it's HTTP messages going back and forth still. They are easier nowadays, most of the time. We are still have horrible monolithic applications uh, around the internet that had to be automated in the old ways. But understand those APIs. You simulate how many threads do you need to generate the load or, because I, I would argue as well, synthetics is another area to get into performance testing where you need to understand how to automate, right? Yeah, that's true. And, and and to 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 add to your point, I think um, the uh, today, uh, I mean, even if it's simpler, I think there is a lot of new architecture concept like a service mesh, 
if uh, it introduce uh, SSL, you don't control it. You just heritate of that. So there are the 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 you will touch lots of various technologies and you will have to know them. Uh, so I think it's very exciting. So if you're curious about technology, it's 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 a wonderful uh, career path because you will know touch so many technologies and and like we discussed at the beginning. And also, I think it's a natural transition if you want to be an SRE and an efficient SRE or working in observability space. I think you will be naturally shifting to that area. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's 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 a great way of getting the right technical background that you need to then go on other type of worlds. It's um, these these two technologies, right, or two paths to start on performance uh, scripting understanding. Would you say um, I, I am obsessing on HTTP, but uh, we nowadays have a few new protocols like gRPC that also it's uh, getting quite a lot of attention and use in the market. We still have web sockets out there. I uh, still have heard of several projects around them. Would you add another one that people I should think, understand? Uh, Understanding uh, event-driven architecture, hmm. so being able to push messages, um, because at the end, probably your systems either either the system will do it automatically because you interact with an API or a gRPC call and it will do it, but sometimes you you want to simulate the chain where the other component dependency will trigger, so you'll probably have to simulate those messages. So mm-hmm. I think that also is something that you should probably look at it uh, because it's use quite heavily uh, and understanding also the the challenges of event driven architecture is also something because if you look at around on the uh, cloud providers i mean if you just take amazon s3 buckets i mean you can store anything a lot of things different and then lambda functions could be triggered through uh, objects created or updated and and that's basically like an event driven approach so it's a, it's also an, uh, for a, for the mind of a pr- traditional performance engineer, it's it's a bit different to to deal with this. But I think yeah, you mentioned HTTP, gRPC, but I will definitely also look at uh, the, the the technology utilizing in those even well, queuing uh, yeah. architectures. All those yeah yeah, those are a big uh, point. You got me thinking as well uh, uh, of something to learn or understand to get into performance testing authentication. Uh, methods that's always a headache when you have to automate something yeah. uh, understand because the first step you cannot just call most apis just being a random uh, person anonymous no you need to have some uh, token key uh, some header that will allow you to trigger that api that's another one i would recommend understand how authentication protocols work and how to use them in an automated way that's absolutely important and on on the other hand the other um path that we were mentioning on observability what things would you say it's key for people to learn understand to land a job in that to start i think uh, from the past uh traditional performance engineer will pretty much stick to metrics Mm -hmm. um and we were looking at logs in case of a problem um, I think now we have all the signals that are very uh, powerful. So if you start with observability and you will use observed data that are available in, in your environment, try to make sure that the data that you will rely on, like specific API, has the right uh, attributes or context attached to it. Because if you have traces with some context, and then you have metrics with some context and log with some context, you understand that the context will link those elements together and then you will be more efficient. So I think understanding a bit how the data is structured in observed layers are important because at the end, if you, before you start automating or before you do anything, if you already have looked at the data and say, oh, um, this metric, I won't be able to use it. Uh, or we have to enrich it uh, because blah, 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 this is missing, this is missing. Um, I think that is very important because if your organization has invested in instrumenting your applications, then it means that you have lots of valuable assets out of the box. Uh, so you could basically uh, take advantage of that. So, But it, of course, if the context is missing, then it's going to be very challenging to use it. The other thing which I personally would love to have when I was starting 
is with uh, Prometheus uh, as client SDK client SDK or with Open Telemetry uh, or, or, uh, metrics, having the options to say, oh, um, let's say, oh, we have this KPI uh, for this component, but this KPI obviously is very specific to our components and it won't be produced out of the box by any solutions. So having the options to go back to the team and say, hey guys, um, let's just create the metric in 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 our solution. So then we will calculate, uh, we will expose, I don't know, uh, the number of search uh, of uh, products uh, splitted by category, geo, IP, blah, 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 no, <laughs> you name it. Um, and then once you have that data, I mean, it's it's you 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 always answer technical. Uh, requirements but also business requirements so if you have mm. the the luxury to have that key business kpi included and produced by the code oh gosh you will just save so much time because at the end if you don't have it you will try to guess or estimate it <laughs> and have if you have actually a metric that did do it for you gosh you will be so 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 happy so so totally, totally, totally agree. I think, and that's another episode that we should do uh, for explaining better and for people to understand what is the difference between metrics, logs, traces, mm -hmm. how to analyze them and do some business intelligence about around them. Or, because, or maybe uh, more than just the differences, or what type of with them, right? what what type of data should I use? Mm -hmm. What is uh, uh, Important to take pay attention because you can drown in that data as well. Is yes, uh, for example, as I say I, I will probably start with a trace or a metric, and then I will drill down, and then I will jump into continuous profiling because I want to see the. So maybe going through that, I will be very helpful. For mm -hmm. So uh, uh, personally, I will give the recommendation: learn how to use any platform, uh, APM observability uh, platform. Super useful. Uh, we have, of course, Dynatrace, New Relic, Datadog, uh, App Dynamics. If you understand how to drive them, it's similar to the car uh, example we did earlier. You know what to look for. You can be useful to your team. I would say that's the first one. And second, as I said, as you said, Hendrik, understand these measurements that you will be seeing in these platforms. Understand how to store them. If you want them in a Prometheus, if you want them elsewhere, time-based databases understand like, hey, what does this mean that I don't have tables anymore? What is this measurement thing that I have on this time-based database? Wasn't it called like a table? No. <laughs> Where are my columns? Call what? <laughs> <laughs> Some of those differences are important. I think we should talk about those in another episode, I talking agree. about these new data structures in which we can store all these metrics, logs and traces and all those things. Um, but to close, yeah, we already exceeded a little bit. Hendrik, ramp down. What sources would you say are good for our friends listening that want to start on uh, as a performance First, engineer? I would say uh, uh, your book uh, <laughs> would be a good start because uh, I think you, you're covering the, all the modern aspects of uh, a performance. Not modern. I think I, I go a lot to traditional, but it's good. It's a good uh, But still, if right? you do modern, you still have to understand those mm -hmm. traditional concepts, concepts uh, yeah. for sure. But I, I would say if you're uh, new to the job and you are, um, you know a bit about coding, then look at uh, the actual solution that are open, open source on the market. So K6, uh, JMeter, but JMeter is, for me, it's not so much on, on the, the developer side. Uh, Gatling, but Gatling is, I don't know if it's still, uh, still Scala popular. is a uh, developing language, yeah. uh, Locust but, uh, for Python. Is yeah, Locust, Locust for Py in Python. Uh, at least you will understand how you can actually generate that the expected traffic and, and so on. Would Grindr fall in that category? That's more uh, like GUI, right? Yeah, well, it's it's also a, uh, HTTP, I guess. Uh, I, I, it's been so much, so long that I didn't see render so i was surprised. i'm not sure if it's still around yeah but uh, some <laughs> of those solutions yeah uh, uh, take a but, look uh, yeah well, well, yeah because now you have the luxury of, of having more uh, open source products available so uh, you have the options to try and 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 make your your tests um there is a lot of cloud vendor to give you uh, a couple of uh, uh workload for free so gcp is one of them uh, Sivo mm -hmm. is doing the same thing there is different cloud providers. so spin up a machine 
spin up a, a container, spin up your, a, a demo app, try to hit that app um, to understand what you're going to do. And, and also make sure that you will see soon that you need actually data. So maybe uh, try to explore on, on how can you um, get valuable assets out of your application that you're testing mm -hmm. with Observity. I think that's, that could be a good start if you're not into a real project, but it will be a way of uh, touching the surface of, of, of uh, the job. Some useful sources that I would um, point to people as well. Perfvites, we have lots of information, 10 years of knowledge in podcast format. Uh, nowadays, a little bit of video format. I would suggest as well people to take a look of the co at the content that you, Henrik, that you are um, in the city observable. It's very useful to understand some of these concepts. I would uh, give a nod as well to our amigo Scott Moore, who also is creating a lot of content explaining what is the latest in technology and what to do. Um, there are some Jmirror uh, online courses in YouTube that I would suggest people, hey, go on those four steps that you start recording something and executing will give you good understanding of uh, at least a tool, as you say, use uh, similar with K6, with Locust, with um, Gatling. Commercial tools, sometimes it's difficult, right? To get like uh, the free license, download it and install them. But I would still suggest people to play a little bit with NeoLoad, with Loadrunner. Um, what else is out there that people should be playing with you? Get a good feeling. Oh, our, our friend from Octoperf. Uh, also, they could. Oh, Octoperf. They have yeah. also lots they of content. Lots of different. Uh, they support different type of solutions. So, you can, if you use Gatling or others, you will be able to. Uh, but they have their own scripting format. But if you want to learn, they have also lot, lots of great content uh, for you guys. Uh, K6, we have a learn uh, repository. Go uh, github.com grafana.k6-learn. And um, there's some so much material. Octoperf, they have lots of blog posts and information that I think uh, they are also a, a treasure chest of information for performance um, testers, seasoned performance testers, and just beginners. And if we think of any others, uh, I think uh, we will be posting here in the comments. Give us some questions. I think, Henrik, it's time to start a sudden ramp down because we already exceeded a little bit the duration. <laughs> uh, but beware. I think this is going to be a two-part episode because our amigo James Pulley also has some perspectives. He has suffered the pains of hiring people or what would be a good recommendation from him. So I think we will have a second uh, part of this, the return of the performance engineer hiring something. <laughs> um, but I think at least uh, for me, Henrik, would you like to add any other? Uh, just a call out. If you are in uh, the, the performance world, in the performance community, and you listen to this video, and uh, you have uh, something, uh, I don't know, would, a, would you project, like to a, gig, a gig that was just amazing, and, and you have the options to, you don't need to mention the customer or the environment, but <laughs> at least share uh, how you've been dealing with that project, how you've been implemented. I think that will be very uh, interesting. Uh, so uh, reach out to us. Uh, it will be also a way of inviting you for like an Ask Me Anything with uh, our community so we can share uh, your story. And with that, I think that our ramp down finished. So everyone, take care. Let us know if you have any other questions, any other things that you would like us to cover, talk about, or that we missed with these best recommendations to start in performance testing. And we'll see you next time on the next episode. So. Adiós, everybody. See you.